Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're taking a look at the Monport GA100 Fiber Laser Engraver. This is the Cadillac. This is their top tier unit and it has 100 watts of power, which is gonna make a big difference for deep engraving. I mean, that's five times the amount of power I've had with uh, the last Monport that I uh, reviewed here on the channel. Um, it also has a MOPA power source and that means that you have a power amplifier in line with your laser and this gives you a lot more adjustability to do things like engrave in color. Now in full disclosure, Monport did send this out and I do get an affiliate commission off of the links and discount codes in the description. Um, it was packaged really well and the setup was so easy. Here are a few accessories that it came with, including some safety glasses and all the cables you need and the software, at least the basic software. So to set it up, it's a one piece unit and I can just fold it open with that hinge and it's ready to plug in. Let's go ahead and take a walk through of the unit. You have your galvanometer head here and underneath there's one box. It has your laser source, your electronics. Everything is all built into one piece on this, which is great. Now the work surface here has a series of threaded fixturing holes and uh, it comes with a couple different little fixtures as well as some screws that you can use, but I'll probably 3D print fixtures for my own particular products. So on the front panel here, you have a main switch for your laser power, and there's also a power switch on the back. And right here is a button you can press to run your program. There is no key switch or large emergency stop on this, so you know be aware of that. The laser head's actually on a motorized axis, and that's what this control panel's for, so you have a manual up and down to move that around, as well as an autofocus button that it will use to focus itself. There's a three point uh, laser system to show when it's in focus on your actual work also. Now, if you want to engrave on larger objects, you can just loosen the screws here on the top face and rotate this whole head over to the side, which allows you to engrave um, with nothing beneath it and you can build your own fixtures and then just rotate it back around and lock it down really easily. I think that's a nice feature. Let's go ahead and run a quick test engrave. Um, I double click to install the driver already and I'll go ahead and find the software. And now I'm going to use this with Lightburn here in a little bit, but we'll start off with their free version. We'll give it a nice little hello world, give it some cross hatching. Okay, so right here I can see the frame of where it's going to sit. I also have an option if I want to see the actual outline. Um, it'll trace that over. Uh, you can see it a little better in reality than through the camera, um, but that's where everything's gonna sit. All right, it came with some glasses. I'll throw those on and fire in the hole. There we go. That's a pretty nice dark mark that happened right away. Single pass on that. This is on carbon steel. Um, and we're talking like, five minutes from opening the crate to being able to do this. So, so far, so good. Let's try it out on aluminum with the same thing. So this was set at 50% power and 1300 millimeters per second. So we're moving pretty fast with a single pass and I can really feel some depth. I wonder if I can crank up that speed to just increase a little productivity for this type of marking job. All right, well that came out just as good and I was running twice as fast, 2500 millimeters per second. So I guess when you got this much power available, you might as well just give it the beans. All right, well, it obviously works pretty good for steel and aluminum. I wanna try with this high power output, some deep engraving, and I'm gonna do it on a brass coin here. So I'm gonna set this up to 90% power. Line it up right here. Look how clear the line is on that. Now 
look how crisp and clear the lines are, especially on that small text. And that's after 20 passes and it's significantly deep. I mean, um, I tried some deep engraving with the other fiber lasers I've had and they worked okay, but nothing like this. And that's, you know, a four minute runtime with just, you know, I first stab at settings. I think I could dial it in even better. So if you're looking to do like deep engraving, uh, I think this is your machine right here. So these slate coasters have been a really uh, fun thing to make. I'm gonna try uh, run one of these, but with this higher power, I'm gonna try to run it quite a bit faster and see what benefit I can get there. Look at that, 48 seconds. And I think I could even do it faster. I'm liking this, I'm liking this. You could, you could make some real money with this thing or have a lot of fun, maybe some of both. Now, one thing I've made a lot of with my other, are these custom dog tags for youth camps and things like that. Obviously this machine's gonna do it, but my goal here is to see how fast. Well, four seconds. It looks pretty good. I'm feeling really good about the performance on steel and aluminum, um, anodized aluminum. Uh, honestly, any of the fiber lasers I've had in here could do that. But the deep engrave on brass, this thing really is at another level on that. So uh, really good. Um, but the main selling point here is the color engraving. And so let's give that a try and see what we can figure out. So color engraving really works best on stainless steel and titanium. And what you're doing is manipulating the time and temperature that uh, you heat the surface. So that you get an oxide layer that's at a particular color, just like when you weld, you know, if you vary your heat input, you'll get different colors. But I found the settings uh, were hard to come by. So if you take a look from these initial tests, I mean, I'm getting some blues and reds and things like that. And over here, you can see a variety of other uh, different colors, even a little green in there, but I need to get a little more scientific about it. I mean, obviously the machine can produce colors, but I wasn't necessarily able to reproduce the exact results that others were getting. And I think it's just really sensitive to the material and the particular machine, because you're trying to hit that oxidation just right to be able to get it. I'm finding that this is really complicated because now with the MOPA laser, you have five different settings to play with. You have power and speed like you would with any laser, crosshatch spacing when you're filling it in, but you have two more variables, frequency and pulse width, and all five of these seem to play in and have an effect on it. So I've switched over to light burn here in the computer where I can make some grids to compare different parameters and start to understand the effects of them. So on these grids, I've locked in the settings based on some things I found online. Um, this is running at 20x speed, by the way, so these are crawling at a real snail's pace. Uh, the variables I'm changing here are line spacing and your frequency, and the line spacing has a huge impact on cycle time. All right, well, if you look at that, I mean, I am starting to get a pretty good rainbow of color right here. This is the frequency um, going up and down of the pulses. And this over here is the line spacing. And it makes sense as your line spacing decreases or, you know, the distance between your lines goes up, you're going to have less heat there. And also as your frequency drops here, you'll have less heat down here. But what I'm noticing is that uh, it seems that the frequency actually has a bigger impact than the line spacing now the issue that I have with most of these settings I'm finding online is that they're so slow to run. I mean, they're running line spacings of 0 0.001 or a thousandth of a millimeter. That's 25,000 lines per inch. And they're doing it at a slow speed. So you need a calendar to measure your cycle time if you're doing any, uh, you know, reasonable sized thing. And I want to be able to be a little bit more productive. So because all of these variables are playing into it, Two of them that don't have any impact on your cycle time or your speed is the pulse and the frequency. So I'm gonna lock in at a reasonably high speed of 1,000 millimeters per second and then 0 0.005 millimeters on my line spacing, which is still really tight, but you know it'll be five times faster than what a lot of these guys are recommending. All right, here we go. And you can see just how fast it is when it does those lines, but let's watch uh, what happens here. We'll leave it in real time for a minute 
and at least this is moving at a pace that I think would be acceptable for production. It's about eight times faster than most of the settings that I found online, and I'm hopeful that we can end up with some colors that will work for us. It's a little bit harder to see the colors when you're looking at this particular angle just because of the lighting, but uh, I'm pretty excited for how this is turning out. All right, so that ran a lot faster, and look at this result here. I mean, those are, you know, pretty good selection of colors at a reasonable speed. Now I'm gonna try just speeding that up by 50%. So I'm gonna try running 1500 millimeters per second and see what I get. And I'll run a little bit higher in the frequency range too and see if that can give me a pretty good palette. Now here's the results at a higher speed. And it seems like I'm getting a little bit less continuous color there, um, except down here at these lower frequencies, I'm getting a really nice green. Now between the two of these, I think I can get a nice green down there and a red and a blue up here that run at what I think is a reasonable speed. I'm sure there's someone out there that's like a laser expert that's watching me do this and just rolling their eyes, but I'm new to the color engraving. I've been using fiber lasers for a few years, but the color engraving is brand new. So help us out in the comments um, to, to know what's worked for you. But I think I found something that's worked pretty well for me. So in Lightburn, I created a profile for a few different settings off of that grid, and I'm just going to see if I can reproduce them here. All right, so here's that color palette. You can see we got the green, the blue, and red that ran at you know a fair speed for color engraving. So at the end of the day, I got a nice little color palette um, that uh, I could use to engrave different things. Um, the machine is clearly capable, but uh, I still have a little bit of learning to do to be able to effectively use the color engraving. All right, well, at the end of the day, what do I think of this thing? And is it worth the more premium price tag compared to the base model that I reviewed a little while back? Well, that's gonna depend a lot on what you're doing. So some things I really like about this machine. One is the all-in-one construction. You don't have that extra box, and that just makes it more portable, easier to use, and that's a big plus in my mind. Um, as far as performance goes, it did outperform in every single test. Um, however, if you are just marking serial numbers or just basic things like that, I don't know that it's worth going up to this higher powered MOPA laser. Um, for deep engraving, absolutely it's worth it. I mean, it cuts your time down significantly and you get a much better product. And also, if you want to use that color engraving on stainless steel, definitely going to be worth it for this one right here. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description for this right here. And using those links really does support the channel if you are going to buy it anyway. I appreciate that. And there's also a discount code that should save you a little bit on your purchase. Um, in addition to that, I'll put a link to my review of the more base model Monport laser down there if that's something that might be a little bit more interesting to you. Hey, thanks a ton for tuning in. If you like this or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up and we'll see you next time.